This your boy Big Creep. Yeah, you already know what it is, man. What's happening, bro, bro? You not rocking with the chaotic vibes. Yeah. A DJ C Chaos. <laughs> On IndioRadio.com. <laughs> the creative villain. We super wing that though. It just came off like that. <laughs> What's going on, man? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Oh man, I'm feeling. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't man, do that. We got Gucci, man. We blessed, bro. We yeah. are. We are super blessed, man. We got a lot of big hurdles we jumping right now. So welcome to the industry. I feel like Max, they, they all blessings, though. I feel like the bigger the hurdle, the bigger the blessing. Most definitely. So before we get too deep into it, make sure you introduce yourselves for the people who live under rocks and don't know what's going on necessarily. Okay. Collectively, we are the creative villains. You know what I'm saying? We don't work with. Saha the Prince, Kanye West, Kevin Gates, um, 21 Savage, a little Estelle, bit of Kodak Black, Estelle. Q, Travis Scott. A lot of that stuff came from the Saha album. Yeah, so I'm black. I'm here. 3D. 3D, like you said, together, Creative Villains. You can follow us at, at Creative Villains. Okay. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I like it. So I like how y'all, uh, y'all try to brush past, you know, probably the top tier artists <laughs> <laughs> of this, of this joke. Yeah, we worked Sci High, Kanye, and Travis Scott, and Estelle. Like, come on. Like, how long, how long have you been in the game, first of all? Man, yeah. I really, not that long. What do you I, mean, not that? was not that long. I've been playing keys since I was a kid, so okay. I've always been into music, but I moved to Atlanta in 2014, so that's like... Five, five years ago. Yeah. Okay. And I would say I've been at it about eight, nine years now. Yeah. So maybe a little longer, but just to, you know, I felt like I had to like take a longer road because I didn't like come up playing music. So when okay. I first came out here, I was interning doing a lot of that. So neither one of you guys are from Atlanta? Nah. Okay. I'm Where from Jacksonville, it? Florida. Okay. Duval. Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Country motherfucker. <laughs> not, not, not Kansas, though. Everybody yeah. think I'm from Kansas. I'm What's from... the difference? I don't know the difference. Just the different states? Yeah, it's okay. like St. Louis, East St. Louis. Bro, it's really no different. Are you from here? I'm not. I'm from New York. Oh, okay. Oh, you can so. hear that. You, you know, know from, from New York. Y'all yeah, from Everything New York. is, anything south of Virginia. It's country. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> country. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's good. Like, wherever the Waffle House starts. city y'all recognize yeah, is like L.A. Up. Nah, we, I mean, we see it. You, you know, it's a different time though. It's 2019. You, we recognize everything. Niggas in New York want to come to Atlanta bad. You nah, you're right. You right. But it's like, shit, like, the, if it's not a big city, oh, I don't know it exists. Nah, niggas ain't showing it no love. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like, it, I feel like if you don't have artists coming out your city or movie productions coming out your city, it's kind of hard for me to, like, it's like, what's going on over there? I feel it. For real. Like I and on. I mean, honestly, shit, that's why we both ended up in Atlanta. I'm you sure know what I'm saying? That's why I'm in Atlanta. You know what I'm like, like Jacksonville yeah. is finally like we got a few artists popping. Shout out to like Young and Ace, Tokyo Jets. Oh, you know what I'm saying? A couple it. different names, but I didn't even know Tokyo was from. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And she this don't be just happened. That shit. She Not don't really. Be and this, that shit. yeah, and this just happened like two or three years ago. So prior oh. to that, like when I started eight years ago, yeah. it wasn't no outlet. Yeah. The only real city that was popping in Jack Florida, period, was Miami. Yeah. And you know, Miami is full of niggas with the bag. If you ain't really like already established, you can't you can't just get in and ride a wave down there. Most definitely. Most definitely. You know. So, so being from Mi Kansas City, Missouri, <laughs> Missouri, <laughs> <laughs> what brought you to Atlanta? What made you say, I'm just pat like 2014? We're talking about relatively recent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, got my degree, finished my degree. Shout out to that. In music, audio production. From? University of Arkansas. Okay. So I, I went to Arkansas for a <laughs> Chaos, like, yeah, I knew he was Arkansas. Gonna... <laughs> like, holy Shout out God. to UAPB. It's an HBCU. <laughs> hey, I ain't mad. I ain't so mad. I just, hey, I don't know too many people that have gone through Arkansas. So shout out to you. That's what I'm trying to You well versed. City. <laughs> he is definitely well versed, bro. There's a lot in Arkansas, man. They do a lot of crazy stuff. I heard, no, I heard they get busy out there. I, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, but I know I, I'm on, on my end. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about either. That's I, I heard they get busy in August. Shout out to August or Little Rock and all of them. Yeah, so it's there. like it's like 50 minutes south of Little Rock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So after I finished that, man, I had a partner here named J Dub. He was working with Saha at the time, mm -hmm. um, and he was telling Saha, "Yo, my partner Black Code on the keys. If you need a key player, like yeah. let him come through." So. Okay. Dub really threw me the lob. He was okay. like, yo, you come crash on the couch. We bust the rent down. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? I introduced you to Saha. And 
That that's really how I met him because he was engineering for Saha at the time. So you was already engineering for Saha. Yeah, and you came out on the as Sci-Hi a key strength. player. Uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah. How, how did you already become like his engineer? Like how did that work itself out? All right, so rewind maybe like two or three years. I was interning at Tree Sound at the time. Okay. And I wasn't even really doing Saha sessions. We just kind of got cool, you know what I'm saying, for me just being around the studio. My boy was his um, main engineer, and he ended up leaving the studio for another gig. So when he wasn't around, he was just like, you know, bro, you kind of cold, right? Yeah. Come in and engineer my session. So we did maybe like one or two sessions, and we just hit it off from there. Yeah. So probably did that for like a year at Tree Sound, and then I ended up leaving. And when I left, you know, I didn't really have like any clients or anything like yeah. that. Maybe like a month after me leaving, he reached out. Sorry. Yeah, okay. and that's when we started working on the Black History Project and everything okay. that progressed after that. His heart is in my in my personal opinion. Thank you, my brother. That's probably, that's probably Thank one you, of bro. My heart in, in my personal opinion. Thank that's you. A, that man. Nigga put a lot of time in on that thing. Hey man, I heard. I, and I don't. I, I don't know Saha personally. I've probably never met him. I can't think of a time that I had. I hear he's super difficult to work with. Like he's like super stickler in my way, no way type. I wouldn't say difficult. I think it's just more like a you, perfectionist. Like yeah. he knows exactly what he wants so and how he wants to. That means you really got to know exactly what you're doing. Like if you don't know what you're doing when he asks for yeah. whatever it is. Gone. And you, you know, know it's like an extension gone. of the environment being around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. Definitely. Most definitely. That's, that's just what I've always, you know, kind of assumed that like, okay, this mentality, he probably learned a lot of this mentality from working with the greatest of the greatest. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Most so. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, he he's super specific, super like, man, we we was working on a project. We might have replayed a sample and ran it through a VST. We might have did the process 40 times. You got to speak you got to like, speak layman's terms for my people too. Oh man, I don't even know where I'm pl- a plug in yeah. um okay, so effect. You got you, you got to remember these people are like not as advanced. They're not industry uh, official just yeah. yet. So, yeah. so VST. when you when you sample when you sample a record, sometimes it'll save you a headache to yeah. just re- redo the sample, recreate the feel of the sample. Most of them. And a lot of times, these are live bands, right? Mm. So we did a lot of research on what kind of microphones were they using. We need to be doing using those mics yeah. when we recreate in the feel. Yeah. We need to be miking the drums the way they're miking. Okay, what was they using in, se- in the 70s? Like, yeah, that's you know, deep. so no, it, it was really deep. And, you know, as we're working through the music, we're changing our minds about how we feel about the song. So yeah. we might have to go go all the way back to the sample, go yeah. all the way back, rework the, the whole song that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, let's say it was, I don't know, Whitney Houston or something. Okay. We rework Whitney's record, try to get it exactly how she sounded, or, you know, we may make our variations if we need to. Yeah. And then we got to take it through that process and say, resample what we did. You know, kind of the same thing yeah. he was saying earlier. We got to resample ourselves. Yeah. Put that back in the record. So the, the process is strenuous, but, you know, when you're working with somebody that wanted down to the T how he heard it in his head, you might yeah. have to go through that process <laughs> 70 times. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, I mean, if, if people say, oh, that's too much, then, okay, I see why they would say he's different. I feel like it was definitely like a boot camp, though. Like, going through that, camp. like, I feel like camp. I can do any session in the world, bring it. You no, know what but, I'm saying? But you really can. After you work with Saha, you could really work with anybody. Anybody. Like, artists that come in our studio and think they difficult or think they a headache or think they yeah. real specific or you're particular. Like, oh, nigga, you're not, you're, you're not, you're really not, not headache. You're not really diving into the music the yeah. way yeah. some some artists do. Okay. Yeah. So I, that was a big lesson from that. And then learning, man, like he said, boot camp. I feel like I learned everything from that, even down to the business side. Yeah. You know, because he was taking us along and you know including us in a lot of what was going on so we got to sit under him and watch like how business is conducted in the music industry so it was it was a really big blessing that's super dope though like and then to even come out of that and and you guys are platinum producers yeah, yeah like well, he he got the platinum Oh. But I mean, as a as a duo, I rep for the brand. So the <laughs> villains, we got to say, look, if one wins, we all yeah, win. Yeah, we all win. That's all I mean. I just like you to, know. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I like yeah. to let them hey, have it. Like, yeah, okay. But yeah, we all win, man. So, so where did you go platinum on? Um, Life of Pablo. Kanye. Oh, yeah. yeah, I co-wrote two tracks on there. Um, FML with The Weeknd and That's Feedback. Hard. That's hard, too. Yeah, I was just man. listening to that, actually. Um, so how did that come about? Like, how did you even work that out? Man, so shout out to the big homie Saha, man. It was... I was still kind of working with him as an engineer, and uh, he was out there in L.A. working on some stuff. And I was also, like, 
at the time doing a little bit of road management. I think mm-hmm. he had a show that weekend too, mm-hmm. so he needed me to go out there and just help him, you know, do some business shit. And at the time, they were already working on the album. So he hits me, he's like, yo, like, I'm getting off the plane. I didn't even know, because he didn't tell me anything yeah. about what they was working on. He just sent me an address. Yeah. So I'm in L.A., you know, I'm kind of, like, feeling myself. I'm hitting people up, like, trying to, like, waste time. Like, nigga, I want to hit the dispensary. <laughs> well, we the yeah. He blowing me up, like, nigga, where you at? Yeah. Get here. So I get my homegirl the address, and she like, oh, yeah, I think you might be at the studio. So I pull up. And immediately, like, first people I see is, like, Tyler, the creator, and somebody, like, Fonsworth Bentley. I'm like, <laughs> shit, like, where am I at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's hey, that's like, a, weird, like, that's instantly, a, that's bro. A, that's a hell of a fucking sighting. You know what I mean? Fonsworth Bentley <laughs> and, and Tyler, Tyler, the creator, in one spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm just automatically like, <laughs> thinking something is about to happen. You here. dig? Like, okay, <laughs> where am I at? <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, security, like, walked me back there to where bro is, and he just kind of laid it out. So he just told me what was up. He's like, yo, you know, I'm out here working on X, Y, Z. You know, don't leave any opportunity, any stone unturned. Like, yeah. I need your help out here. You know what I'm saying? If y'all got any ideas, now is not the time to be quiet about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So I think the first day we was out there, man, me and my boy Mark Bird was in the studio because he's one of um, Saha's producers. Okay. So me and Bird was out there. And, like, the first day we were playing it real timid. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you just kind of excited to be out there. Yeah. You don't really want to fuck nothing up. So <laughs> I don't want to like, touch nothing. You know, don't, don't want to touch, touch nothing. I don't want to fuck up a song. Yeah. But they had two rooms. So we was in one studio with Prince. And then Ye and them were in another building. Mm-hmm. So he was over there for, like, majority of the day the first day. So we just in there. And it's kind of like, all right, bro. Yeah, I can't do this shit again tomorrow. Like, we got to figure something out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're hearing all the references they sending over, but we just acting timid like we're going to add shit. Okay. So I think the first one they might have sent through that we actually touched, it didn't get placed, was uh, Father Stretch My Hands. I tried to just lay some shit on that because yeah. the way you be sending them references, like you'll kind of tell what he's trying to get at. Yeah. You'll be like, bum, 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 da, bum, bum, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You yeah. can just lay words over certain shit. So we just hopped on that one. And that was kind of, I think, the first time that's how I probably looked at it like, okay, y'all niggas might really be able to contribute some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that one, I don't really think they kept nothing from that. But the next day, he came in, and that's when he played FML. Feedback was first. We did feedback first. You know what I'm saying? I came up with a few lines. My boy Bird threw some lines in. And we was just vibing. Like, I didn't even, I never really was too sure if they was going to keep the shit we did. You know what I'm saying? Or was it going to be scraps? Because they make so many versions of songs. Like, you might be working on song C, and they creating version E of the same song in the yeah. other studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you just never really know. So we knock out two. And we was probably out there for a few more days and worked on a few more songs. And by the time I got back to Atlanta, I think they went to, because everything was super last minute. That's one thing I do remember. Like, yeah. if, that, if it dropped on February 11th, they probably turned it in, like, February 9th. Because remember, they did that fashion show in yeah. New York. So uh-huh. everybody left for that. And we had no clue what was going on. Like, yeah. I didn't even know if he had heard anything we did. Yeah. And then maybe, like, a couple days after that, that's when Saha hit me. And he was just like, yo, congrats. You made the album. That's hard. Yeah. That so it was, was a that blessing, like? bro. Man, I can't. Because I, mean, I wanted like, to shed a couple tears <laughs> on hey, site. Like, hey, I definitely hey. played it cool. But yeah. I wanted to break down, bro. Because that was, you know what I'm saying, probably one of the big biggest album. moments. Yeah. That was a big album. That yeah. was a real big album. And they had two placements on there. Real shit. That's hard. Real shit, man. Right? Thanks, bro. That's real life. So even going through that now, how do you now, like as a collective, y'all both have been through boot camp and working with Ye and working with a thousand other artists. How do you today pick and choose how you work with pe- certain people? Like, or is there a process? You want to go for, you want me to go? Go ahead. You got that. Man, for me, as far as artists, I really, I don't like attaching my name to something that I don't believe in. Mm. You know, even if somebody's paying me to yeah. work with them. And, you know, like, I, I mean, I love money, but I just can't. Who don't? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I just, I be feeling like people watching. Yeah, most definitely. You know? Everything, like, is, every, branding watch. is everything, so I, I can real. definitely yeah. understand that. So the people that watch that watch me on social media, I really respect. So yeah. I can't ever let, I can't ever post something 
and have them be looking at me like, oh, black, you did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, So that's, man, quality is everything because that's that's the brand. That's everything. So how do you, like, what's the process? Like, do you, is there like a vetting process? Do we have to have an interview or? Well, (laughs) let's sit down and figure out. Sometimes when you meet people organic, you know, it just kind of work. But I always want to hear something like, yo, send me something. Especially if somebody like hit me on Instagram, like, hey, I want to work with you or whatever. Send me some ideas. Yeah. You know, and I, I hate telling people that oh, I wasn't really crazy about your music, but, yeah. you know, hit me up. Maybe, is, it, you know? is it like, I'm not crazy about your music, but I see potential, or is it, I'm not crazy about your music, leave me the fuck alone? No, I never even really say that I'm not crazy about your music. I just say something like, you know, that's not, I'm not there right now. It can go either way, though, because sometimes you may have a cat that's in you something that you don't like, but you yeah. can, like, you know, see, see got yeah, going on. Yeah. you got some potential, okay. like you said, but then sometimes it'd be like, nah, this ain't it. This ain't it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to just come I'm clean. At. And that, it's like, that might that might be somebody cup of tea, so I can't never just yeah. be like, oh, your music is trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's just I, it's the same thing me. for me. I always, just, I always tell people, it's just, they don't fit my platform. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can't really do nothing. Real political. Yeah, like, you know, I keep it real funky. Like, I'm very honest. Like, hey, I don't know if this is going to fit anybody's platform. <laughs> Straight but up. I know this for a fact. This don't fit this my don't platform. This don't fit my platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, so that's the like approach that. I say. So, I mean, like I said, if I meet somebody uh-huh. organically, like, man, if I'm working with somebody, you bring your partner through to the studio, he plug up, he play me something, man, let's work, let's get it. I think another thing, too, like, that I really be looking for, and I think we both do, is what are you going to do with the music? What kind of following you got? Who mm-hmm. fucking with you in your city? Like, because we're going to put all the time and energy that we got into making sure your project is super dope. But yeah. when we finish and get to the finish line, like, you don't want to just, you know what I'm saying, drop it and 500 people hear the project. Like, yeah. let's make sure that we're actually trying to pump this. You actually got some marketing ideas. Even if you ain't got a lot of money, be yeah. creative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember one time we was out there for A3C. This cat rented a damn U-Haul. He was rapping on the back of that, yeah. just riding through the yeah. city. I remember that. You I remember that? that? I seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's like, do what you got to do to get it out there. You know what I'm saying? So that that really draws me in the artist. Like, you know, if I see some potential and I feel like we can help you with the music, but mm-hmm. you got a nice little following and you really, like, trying to build your own brand. Or a nice team. Yeah, nice little team. Like, yeah. we'll fuck with it. So, so I met you guys on some R&B shit. But listening to you and looking at your resume, you got a lot of hip hop, rap. You know, I don't even know what do we classify Travis Scott as? Like, what is he? Man, just a million, bro. Everything, bro. I don't think. I don't think he has like a. <laughs> now nah, you nah, can't really put you know him in the at all, bro. But, but I think lately we just I don't know we just caught a little R and B way, yeah. R and B way. Do you have a preference? Um, not, not really. Not really. You know what I'm saying? Either a specialty, a maybe. I I would hate to like. Be too much into one and not be able to express yeah. yourself on the other side. Most like, definitely, it, it sucks to be doing too much trash. I feel like our specialty would probably be like that soulful. That's I would agree. Like soulful sample, like you know what I'm saying. Um, that that Black History album, uh, project, shit like that. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? that I'm that vibe up. and the more like kind of melodic soulful vibes too. So maybe um, like the way Chance's project kind of sounded. Okay. Um, so it's like musical, but you can rap over it mm-hmm. too. You can sing over it. I would say that's where we, that's our best pocket. Okay. Yeah, man. But you know, I think the R&B lane is something that we both really love R&B music and we super dope at it. Beige okay. was just like our first opportunity to Don't, really. You can't, just, you can't just jump into it. You got <laughs> oh, oh, to introduce Beige. You can't just, hey, Beige. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Beige. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to what y'all got going on over there. But um, so yeah, you talking about beige? Shout out to beige. Um, let them know who she is. You yeah, know, so that's, beige that's is project the too. first artist that the creative villains are really getting behind. Man, she's super dope. We got a project about to drop um, sometime in late June that called Dead like Summer. The detox. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> the like detox. That's no, not bro. true. I, or maybe maybe the, the, the way the branch is falling is getting back to me. Like it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, we got to push it back. You probably get a lot of yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be like. Page about to drop. Oh, bet. Send me some. Hold on, it ain't ready. Nah, you got the source now, bro. Yeah, you, you, you tapped in. You, you tapped know, in. But we got to make sure before you hear it, it's super right. Because you know, we yeah. ain't trying to get that, that email back like, ah, this ain't my vibe. <laughs> yeah, this ain't really <laughs> nah, my like, platform. I, I, I mean, but see, like, at the same time, like, I'm, as, as and everybody knows I'm in the strip club. But as much as I'm in the strip club, I play a lot more R&B. Shout out to my Saturday parties. I got a Saturday party, mm-hmm. day party, I Encore. On Saturdays, all R and B. Okay. So you know what I'm saying. Like I, I do appreciate have, you for reaching out to the R and B community. I have yeah. to though. Like you know, like it, it gets a little redundant to be um, 
in the booty club all the time. Yeah. Just boom, boom, boom. Like, I have been looking for one, and just so happened my man started one. It was like, you got to put me on. Yeah, that's and we've been rocking, so I, I appreciate that. And then I feel like, too, the R&B wave in Atlanta kind of died a little bit. Like I think the R&B, me and, me and Izzy was having this conversation a couple weeks ago. I think the R&B wave died. Like, not died, but, like, has fallen tremendously off. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, to even f- see people trying to revive it or, you know, live it is hard to me. Like, I didn't think we could do a whole party on some R&B shit yeah. until we did it. It was like, oh. And, like, damn, people like, really want this, this shit. Fuck, like, yeah. they're singing. Like, there's, there's not no regular club shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're singing and dancing. Like, oh, shit. Young people. I like it. Yeah, but, man. um, yeah, like, I, we, was just talking, we was just talking about that shit. Like... I'm like, damn, like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no. where did it go? Like, what? Because I was, I was telling him, I was watching, uh, who the fuck was that? Sammy. Okay. Sammy had an interview mm-hmm. and said that he feels like the violence in the communities and, you know, the U.S. abroad is because of lack of R&B. He agreed. I was like, I don't know. Yeah. It feels like a stretch. Yeah. But I would need I, to see some support. Niggas are still going back in the I, 90s. I, I, I <laughs> like, still I feel like there's a super lack because I can't even name you 10, you know what I'm saying, R&B artists that are, like, super mainstream. Yeah, you know especially right? out of Atlanta. Especially out of Atlanta. Especially yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. Especially Think about guys, that, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I'm going back five, six, seven years, maybe, you know, we're going to find an archive. It's going to go crazy. Facts. But, like, recent? Like, I personally can't. Maybe it's because I'm not. That could be why a lot of R&B singers are singing over... 808 driven records now really singing over more upbeat you yeah. know what i'm saying like maybe that's just the future of it i mean it yeah no because like i said i'm doing a whole party yeah and i'm dropping like, like black i'm dropping jacques you know what i'm saying like is they singing yeah it's not they we're not doing no trap nothing nah man it's definitely coming back bro and i feel like the biggest thing that we had to try to do was just find a way to make ourselves different as producers, and I think that's when we kind of noticed, like, okay, this would be our strength. Because if you look at Atlanta, like, Southside, Mike, Will, Metro, the yeah. boys got that trap lane on lock. You it's know what I'm saying? Place. Like, it's, so locked locked it's gridlocked, bro. It's locked down. You know what I'm saying? Like, every every six months, it may be one new guy to get added to the formula, but for yeah. the most part, it's been them same guys. They told him to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For years. So, for us, when we really sat back, it's like, okay. What are our strengths? What can make us different? And that's what we came up with, man. Let's try to drop an R&B artist. While yeah. everybody else doing that, let's go do this real quick. That's hard, though. That's hard. So being producers, and because both of y'all are in a group, is it harder? Because this industry is not for y'all. Like, it's, it, y'all carry us, but it's not for y'all. Like, y'all At not all. in the forefront. Y'all not, you know what I'm saying, praised or anything like that. So how does that feel? Because as a DJ, like, we're like the bottom of the totem pole. Like, it's like, oh, nigga, you just, like... People say, like, oh, we can't do this shit without you. But then it's like, nigga, you can go to iTunes and forget uh, I even exist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know clubs that run off iPads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, how does that make y'all feel? What kind of position does that put y'all in to know that? I'm going to put this work in, but the notoriety might not be there necessarily. Man, for me personally, I don't know, you know, about three. But I think, you know, in the last maybe year or so, I just kind of changed what I thought was important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you wanted that? You wanted the... Yeah, I of wanna course be, you want to be recognized. Of, of course. course you want placements. Of course you want the plaques. You want yeah. the, You know what I'm saying? But lately I've just been thinking from a business aspect. Like, really, what's, what's my bottom line? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Can Most I feed definitely. my family? Can I feed myself? Most definitely. You know, so that kind of made me evaluate, like, okay, as a producer, engineer, keyboard player, like, what... How do I make this work for my lifestyle? How do yeah. I support myself? And that's that's what I've been thinking, you know, about lately, not more so much all the things that producers not getting, just, you know, taking the cards I got, yeah. taking the, the role I play, and trying to make the most of it. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Yeah. Financially, trying to just reach out to the people in my own network. Like, because yeah. we play the A&R games and sending demos to the, to the label yes. and doing it, you know. That shit's exhausting, bro. It's really, it's a really exhausting process. So it's like, man, we got a lot of dope people in our network, a yeah. lot of dope people that surround us. Like, let's work with them. Let's make it work with them. Like, yeah. if, if, Chaos got something going on. Let's support that. Let's yeah. if 
T.O. got something going on. Let's pull up on T.O. Shout out to T.O. Shout out to T.O. Yeah, shout out to T.O. Ski yeah. Woski. Yes. Yeah, see, that'd be the problem. Like, like you said, niggas will run. When DJ Drama doing something, everybody will run to that. You niggas Trust don't me. even know Drama. But when Trust your boy me. Chaos doing something, Trust me. you know what I'm saying? Trust and that's the me. problem with it, bro. And we kind of realize that. So it's like, like he said, definitely just getting back in tune with, like, our network. And I feel like, too, as a producer, man, like, you kind of got to eat it like early you're not you're, you're never going to get as much recognition as the that's artist a, anyone fact. else you know that's what i'm saying a, that's a big unless you want to like really like p diddy it you know what i'm saying and just be in all the videos i've ever seen in recent time do it was esco yeah esco, esco. okay esco is another one you know what i'm saying like if you're going to do it to that level cool but you know a lot of times man that shit takes a lot of personality that a lot of producers don't have yeah you know what i'm saying most producers are used to just kind of being like in the studio dolo in the studio <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, like up, yeah, going crazy, up just going crazy That's so that would head. be a full-time job for a lot of guys yeah. you know mm -hmm. so i mean and, and then engineering too you accept it early because engineers get no credit like oh, yeah. engineers if you say the djs at the bottom the engineers might be like <laughs> right above y'all i mean hang on for the engineers might be below it. yeah you feel me like okay so <laughs> only because, exactly only bro. because of the new wave where it feels like everybody's a studio can buy a studio and everybody can be an engineer and everybody like, everybody like, yeah give me 30 dollars i'm, I'm mixing engineer. master you know track it was like, like, like crazy and that make it hard man y'all yeah. industry is very 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 saturated get a computer and, and a software y'all pretty much like and it's affordable now so and i was gonna say like it, it's almost to the point where like I and I excuse my ignorance. I don't even know what the boards in the studio do, but you, <laughs> I ain't never seen too many people work the motherfuckers. No, they, they like, I know, I know they more outdated. people who put the laptop on top of the board and, and just, just it's a day to work. Yeah, you know like saying? I said, it's a, you'll see that in the older studios because it was necessary back in the day. Yeah. You know, so I feel like back in the G, you you had to be good, of course, but you had to know how to work the you board. You had to know how to have some knowledge. Yeah, of that yeah shit. You, you don't really have had to. Know to. Yeah, nah. Today they you make it's like a plug in. So now you just got to be better than everybody not even better you, you know? just gotta market yourself better and you gotta and that's I was just about you gotta to do that, business bro. better you gotta market thing, yourself like, better like you were saying with you know it being so accessible now as producers I feel like that's when we started focusing more on branding. Like, okay, yeah. what's going to make people just want to fuck with us off top? Opposed to every other producer or every other engineer that got a laptop and cutting prices. Branding? Yeah. What else? Customer service? Customer service. Yeah. You know, you know skill know. level? Yeah, skill level. The way you conduct business. You know? All that stuff, that I think that'll help drive the business. Yeah. You know? I agree. I agree. I, I, I also that's, say, that's like, important. hustle. If I can out-hustle you, I can out-hustle Oh, yeah. You oh, yeah. Man? That's just my... Like, I, I'm... I, I never say I'm the best. I don't give a fuck what I say. I'm never gonna say I'm not the best. But I know there's a DJ out there that's <laughs> on my ass. It's got you in the headlock. <laughs> but at the same day, I work every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got six, seven nights a week, so I'm straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do what you want to do over there. You got one night? You hard that one night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I'm locked in. You the other six, you dig? Exactly. So that's just how I kind of, you know, I always say, if you got to hustle somebody, you got you going to win. Big shit. But um, so we pretty much touched on a lot of the shit. I want to kind of get into some current shit. Like, what are we working on now? What we got going on now? Man, we got some shit in the vault, bro. Um, I, 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 we spoke about it offline. I'm not going to say that I need an exclusive <laughs> I'm not going to put that type of pressure on you. I understand the politics and all that. <laughs> I get it. You know what I'm saying? Go. Anybody got pressure, come see me, though. But I do I, I do want to hear. I do want to hear about what y'all got going on. We're going to at least let the people know okay. what's going okay. on. We ain't got to necessarily play no records. And don't worry, I'm not going to leak them in the club and no crazy shit like that. But at least tell the people what's going on. All right, man. I know for a fact my boy just got a crazy one with Missy. Uh, oh, that's OTW. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. hey it's OTW. He, he, he said, he said, oh. uh, <laughs> we got to talk You ain't playing. Nah, we ain't going to play. We're not going to play it. Gonna gonna play it. it. I just you want to You got to want to, hey. That's Big a blessings, man. That's a goat. It's yeah. out. Yeah. It's out. Yeah, bro. Like, man, that, was, that process was so, like, I, I'll go into detail after it kind of unfolds some more, but... The she's incredible, man. Is it just a song? And or I was, project? it was, is it? It's a record that I jumped okay. on, and like to to just know, like I got so much satisfaction to know that she's still ahead of the curve. Yeah, she's still super creative, like because I grew up on Missy. Most definitely. So when I was invited, I'm like, 
oh man where is she right now <laughs> like who is she right yeah. now man yeah. she's evolved she's still yeah you know when she, she was dropping all that stuff with Timbaland back yeah. in the G her stuff was her and Timbaland stuff just up here really every, everything Timbaland did and I think Timbaland was on the record too, man. Okay. So it was, man, like such a huge it was blessing. Ghost status. Yeah, that shit's huge. Such ghost a status. huge blessing, man. That's huge. It's like the man. biggest blessing ever. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you have a fan moment? Did y'all actually? I didn't link? fan out. Yeah. Y'all linked up? Yeah, yeah. I was like in oh, there working like old with, her, with her. Yeah, yeah. like That's it hard. wasn't no files. Wasn't no, it was like you pull up, you ain't going home with yeah. none of this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah super. <laughs> So you super so, men in black vibes. Like. So, so is that is that like a thing too? Like, do you prefer to pull up on the artist? Yeah, always, bro. One hundred percent. Just because you can get them exactly what they asking for. I remember one time in particular, we was we was working with this artist, and we had already like given her a pack of beats that she picked that she wanted to work on the next session. Mm. Now, if we would have just sent them beats and let her do her thing, that would have been that. But we came in the next session, she had a whole different vibe, bro. Yeah. And she ended up picking a whole different beat, and that shit's a smash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of times, you just being in the room, like you said, you can pick up on the vibe. If you want something turned down, you ain't got to keep emailing yeah. back and forth. Yeah, just yeah. let me know right now, hey, I don't like that sound. And okay. then with her, like, with, with Missy, she's so creative, like, and she's so tuned in that it's like, she was tapped into every little detail. Like, I'm playing a key. I might add, I might change one note the yeah. second time I played a loop, and she's like, nah, black. That ain't what you did. Yeah. Like yeah. put the put the B flat back in there. I heard what you think you slick. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I ain't trying to <laughs> I was just experimenting with yeah, it. Like yeah, yeah. so that was crazy to know that like she's really that deal. Like yeah. so yeah, that was super blessing. We got we got a record with, with Spitter. That yeah. was dope. Okay. Spitter and Dreddy, man. They supposed to um be working on I think it's either gonna be a Jet Life album or an album with him and Trademark. So we okay. got a couple things. We, we got, got one. Some, some exclusives. In yeah, yeah I we like got that. we got one on that right now. We just sent the pack over. So, yeah, you know, so we got our fingers more, crossed, man. I know for sure this this other record we sent. At least one of these other few records we sent, he gonna love. Like how do y'all? How do y'all? Because um, we had DJ Plug in here, and, mm -hmm. and I, I I work I'm, with him. I met Plug. Yeah, yeah. I work with him, and um, he's really super weird about what he sends and who he sends it to yeah so how do y'all choose what y'all send to certain people because i know like, especially for you know the spitters or the missies of the world they mm. kind of like send me your best three yeah <laughs> i don't want no 20 yeah pack. 20 pack man yeah. when, when it's like that's what that's why we like to be in there with you because mm -hmm. if we ain't got what you're asking for we could make it right now Cook it up. but when when we send it man we really just vibe out to what they already got yeah um get into that vibe and you know try to get as best a description of what they going for from whoever the connection is between the two whoever a and r who even if it's them like uh -huh. and then just work from there okay work like what we think you would you would like yeah and i think that's been a like a big a, a big blessing for us lately man just having a closer connect to the artist because a lot of times you know if you messing with somebody friend of a friend it's like yeah by the time you get what the artist want, that shit might have changed. You know what I mean? That's real. So when you connect a little more direct, it's like, okay, I just got out the studio. This is what they was working on. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you ain't really shooting in the dark as much. Because a couple it's years man. ago, bro, I felt like we were shooting from half court every time. Like, <laughs> you know, the the light, yeah, the just every the time, bro. bro. We was blindfolded. They spin us around three times. Yeah. Shoot your shot. <laughs> like, Damn. They, yeah. they make it hard. I mean, but they, hey, it's one because it's a million fucking producers. Like, <laughs> and, then, like and, then, and then I think the internet, like, because I was talking about, uh, I was talking to a producer about how he felt about people who were just like, snatch a beat off youtube use the beat mm -hmm. tags through it and mm -hmm. all and you know like you never even figure out who made the beat or you know there's yeah. no correlation it's like oh yeah that shit hard but who the so fuck that's like that? man so some producers play the youtube the yeah. sound click the soundcloud it's like game. russian roulette yeah it they, really is selling beats oh. for 24.99 yeah you know and that's that's how they making their living so when a when the artists have been on that YouTube wave, they come in the studio and we like, ah, it's gonna be X, Y, and Z for it, right? I'm not paying that. They just be appalled. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. How dare you? For <laughs> real, bro. Hey, I mean, I get it though. I get it though. It's the same thing for me. Like, people come in looking for rotation, and they might have went to Joe Blow, and he'd be mm -hmm. like, man, I play a song for ten dollars. Dog, I ain't got it. <laughs> that ain't this and this ain't that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I know it, man, one yeah. thing I feel like we both learned here recently, man, is the artists that you cut a lot of the slack on the on the rates, on the prices, them the artists that require the most work. Yeah. 
They be the ones really coming in there putting you to work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Try to change the song six, seven, thirty times. Let's change the key, change the tempo. Let's just re record the whole record. Yeah, matter of fact, y'all just remake the beat. Like, yeah. Damn, bro. Right. You know, you that's, make the beat four or five times. It's like, man, we really should have full priced this one. <laughs> we should have full priced <laughs> yeah. this one. This nigga got away <laughs> with one. For real, so, does yeah. that, like, does, do you think, I mean, because we all have to make a living. Yeah. Do you think, because one thing I learned is, and it's way different for me than y'all because there's a lot less work for me, but when I show love, the money come back tenfold. But does that same method, would that work for y'all? Sometimes, like, you know, a sometimes. Lot, a lot of times. I yeah. A lot of times it will. Like you said, you will get the artists that run out every once in a while. But a lot of times you will have people that kind of like, because, you know, word of mouth is the best business. Most and definitely. if somebody pull up and they know prior to them, Coming to us, they music ain't sound like that. They gonna be like, "Yo, who you was working with?" You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, like if yeah. your homeboy yeah. been yeah. Yeah. five, six on the rap tip, and he pull up and he just got some fire, you like, "Damn, man, <laughs> who you been working with?" You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Man. And that usually what happened, man. Yeah, and on on top of that, showing love, man, that's gotten us a lot of love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if it ain't immediate, like you said, and even if it ain't financial love. People bring you business and people bring you opportunities because you're doing the same for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's real. So, yeah, that, man, I, I think we, me and three took, like, just all of 2018 to network yeah, and, like, and expand our network. And I just think that's when we met. I meet think. people. Yeah, probably yeah. so. Yeah, I think so. Probably so. So we just get yeah, this. So before that, fashion. we was just in the studio, like we said, producers yeah. just cooking up Making all day. Beats every day. Posting yeah. beats every all day. day. They ain't help nothing. No. Nah. Once you start getting out there, you touching gotta get that soil, bro, friends. shaking some hands, you know what I'm saying, kissing babies, like you really got a campaign to get there, bro. Trust me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's exhausting, but you right gotta now. do it. And I feel like that, that's the one thing that kind of helps us stand out, bro. Like you can go mess with homie with the twenty five dollar beat online, but yeah. when you come to a session with the villains, we really gonna produce this record, like. Yeah. It don't matter if you're a singer or a rapper. We're going to make sure we get the best performance out of it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. 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 And exactly. I think that's, that, like, that's the difference. We got to write you a melody. If we got to write the hook for you. Yeah, you know. We got to change the flow a little. Whatever we <laughs> Tell got. you what, we got you. And that's like the throwback production. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like Diddy wasn't necessarily yeah. playing no instruments. Yeah. But he wasn't letting you go home yeah, and that right. motherfucker yeah. sounded perfect. That motherfucker had to sound right. You for did? Sure. For sure. So like I said, I want to get into something new. Like y'all working on personal shit. I got personal artists. Yeah. I got what, you, what we got going on. I kind of want to hear some. You know what I'm saying? We're going to play a little something. So I just want y'all to speak on it. Okay. I ain't going to lie. We got some heat with beige. Okay. And we've been really in the dungeon cooking up this cooking project. Up, man. Man. Now, nah, come on, bro. You got I, I love that. Hey, like, 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 and, and one thing I will say, when I first, like, I didn't even hear a song. I think, I want to say she showed me, like, a... Christmas video or mm -hmm. some shit Her like cover. that, uh, yeah. And yeah, I was like, cover. "Oh, she's dope! Like, who's that?" <laughs> and like, shout out to T.O. T.O.'s always bothering me about people, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's the homie. Yeah, nah, she, she I fucks with it a long way, but um, she just was like, "Yo, this babe." And if you understand me and T.O. relationship, she's gonna call me about it. Like, I don't care if T.O. is at a fucking showcase. You're like, "Oh, no, son, this <laughs> nigga right here." <laughs> You want to do like nah? So I'm gonna call this nigga in the morning. Okay, my nigga, do your thing. But when she hit me about that, she like, like yo, genuinely like, I'm fucking with this one. So I, you know, I'm on board. You know what I'm saying? Whatever yeah, she did. So bro. I knew from then she was hard. Like that was my first sighting of her. I heard a couple of songs. I yeah. I still get the. You get Vinces little... and Vinces, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's all good. Yeah, though, nah, you know what I'm nah. about to get the full yeah, project soon, we, we getting it together, man. I think the single we got is hard. I think the concert we got is hard. I think the videos we finna put together, the team we putting together, the musicians we done had, mm -hmm. all of it is incredible. We just got to make sure we can push it right. You know okay. what I'm saying? Get it through the right channels and, yeah. you know, get it actually heard by some people before we double back and run through the process Most again. definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. So beige, shout out to beige, man. Um, 
we still cooking up with Talia. Shout okay. out to Talia. Shout out to whole, they whole team, they whole squad. Who's, who's uh, over Talia? I know. I see my boy Brand New doing some things with her. I know um, Brand New work with her. Um, um, Ink by Cali. Is Ink that? by yeah, Cali. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, shout he's, out Cali. He's really involved. He really be connected uh, all the time. KY engineer really, really yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. Have you seen a couple? J Rod. Yeah, J Rod. Shout out, shout out to J Rod. I've been to J Rod. You know, Talia. That super hard. The sauce. The super. The super sauce. Man, so yeah, yeah, they so got a nice little team over there, man. Yeah, shout um, out to them. Trans Lee, we've been locked in with Trans. Shout out to Trans. Hey, oh, Trans man. Lee, I like, I like, homie. I, I didn't even know who he was. Yeah, right. I was at the W. I think we were doing like a DJ conference or something. It was a couple years ago, and he walked up to me with a sandwich bag. And in this sandwich bag, it had a mixtape, a condom, and a Rello. And from that day, I thought he was the illest. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, that is great like marketing. Fucking pack it right you here. Did? It was like a Magnum and a Rello. I think I missed it. Was like, I was like, man, let's I see appreciate it. Hey, you a real one, dog. You a real one, dog. Yeah, exactly like, what I mean. Oh, that's man. crazy. Shout bro. out to James Lee. If anybody, if he listening. I remember that shit. Yeah, shout out Trans. Yeah, we've been going crazy. He's super. With Trans so too, we did man. a little bit of work on his last project, but we've been, you know, yeah. trying to get as many records done yeah. with him before he take the fuck get yeah, back it's on only his a grind. Of time, you know, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's only a matter of time, man. He threw a big lob recently too. Yeah, man. That's something that we got to keep tucked because okay. we don't even really know how Ooh, official that they way. Played the secret Ooh. game with me, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nigga. Okay. Trans Lee threw the Dwayne Wade. LeBron <laughs> yeah, like, off the backboard, yeah, yeah straight like, up. Just, yeah, that, that picture, <laughs> that picture, <laughs> that picture. So that's, that's love, right. man. But we got him in with our with one of our writers, man, Scotty. Um, what's Scotty Instagram? Uh, I think at Scott Taylor Jr. Oh, Scott Taylor. Yeah, you know you Scott? Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super crazy. I be, I be so dibbling and dabbling hard. in okay. the studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he, oh, he did a lot of the writing for Beige on this record. They, they did a lot of co- collaborating for I her project. Know. You going to hear it. You yeah. He hard, though. I like, He's super I, I see, hard. Who would I see him with? I don't matter. He be over there Mean Street going crazy. So you street, probably done seen him with everybody. He was at Mean Street, but I don't remember. He was with an artist, but I don't remember. Yeah, he engineering right over there, so he be yeah. locked in. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah. super he blessed us on Beige Project, man. Super blessed us on one of these records with <laughs> Translate, man. He came in, wrote this hook. Yeah. We got a choir on it. It's, yeah. it's magic. Oh, it's yeah, it's magic. This shit going to be big. That's it's magic. So what, 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 what we playing? Oh, man. We there. We at that point. Yeah, we at that point. I want to know what we I'm gonna We got to give the people I'm gonna something. I'm going to send them tonight. You got the most recent. I got, I got that. Yeah, 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 I yeah. We can run tonight, the Talia Jones. Speak, speak on it. Oh, no. It's a different tonight. It's two tonights. This is the one I was talking Jack. about beige tonight. Oh, oh, I don't have that song. Yeah, oh, show me that. okay. Yeah, switch it up for me. me. Okay. You dig? Speak on it a little bit. Why you finally speak on it tonight a little bit? Shout out to Mark Bird. Okay. We mentioned him earlier. Um, I hit him up, let him know what we was doing with the project with beige. He's like, I'm on it like that yeah. quick. He yeah. must have sent the beat later that night, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I took the stems, added my parts, he added some stuff, we put it together, gave it to Bay. She, stems, please. Go oh, I'm oh, sorry. The, like, yeah. He gave us the file. Sound. Yeah, he okay. gave us like, like the snare, the high okay. okay. You know, all okay. the patterns, so we could we could really work with it. I added some chords and added some more to it. You know, we yeah. we bounced it around the yeah, room. Yeah, see where it right. go. Yeah, I've actually been in a room with y'all and it'd be like that that captain chair kind of change. Yeah, somebody and, here, yeah, somebody in this corner, somebody. like, hey, hold on, tag me in. <laughs> you feel me? Amen. That's why I love working with producers that know what they're doing, man. Yeah. Cause I ain't gotta go hold your hand and yeah. go help you do yeah. that. Yeah, take the burden off you, bro. Exactly. Now you can be as creative as you you can, yeah. cause you ain't gotta pull nobody else's weight. But yeah, so Bird through the, the initial live, I called it um, EP thirteen. EP thirteen. Shout out to them. It's like a writing production collective. Yeah, they um they're actually yeah. managed by DJ from Organized Noise. Oh, so they got the OG behind them. OG, you know super OG. Yeah. Shout out to EP thirteen. Shout out uh, King Tomorrow. Yeah, they came through and you wrote the shit out that song. Before. You I probably met everybody before. I don't know. Yeah, but they, they came so through. they co-wrote this record with with Beige that we finna send you. Okay. I'm on Instagram. I'm supposed to be sending that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Instagram. Instagram is a motherfucking. I was just telling uh, Izzy, I was looking for, we was looking for some picture. I sent an email. And that motherfucker, like, dragged me down. Like, I was looking at all time. I had seen. Instagram is like a rabbit like hole, bro. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, was like, man. motherfucker. It's really like, 
I be having to delete it off my phone sometimes. It's, it's certain females is just too bad on the gram. Like, look, I don't even need that pressure. So, like, do, do you guys have, like, distractions? Like, do you get in, like, super work mode where you got to cut certain distractions out? Like, because yeah. I know yeah. creating is a lot different. Like, you got to have a different type of focus. You really yeah. do. kind of wake up each How do I send that drink. to you? I got you. Yeah, we, um, we just did a record with Brittany Camille. Um, she's super dope. I think her Instagram is, like, at Miss Camille. Okay. Um, we did a record called Whole Meal, man. She's going crazy with that right now. She, we just was in what what club was that? Uh, Revel. Yeah, we was in Revel. I know yeah. she's gonna be in Magic City this weekend with the record. You know, you heard? yeah, going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just time for that. So she, so oh, it's like a rap record. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like kind of like rap singing. Like rap singing, you know, you she, know what's going on right now. Like a lot of them chicks is kind of like. Trying to dibble and dabble into the rap lane a little bit. Yeah, she was on, Brittany was on The Voice. So she can, like, sing, sing, sing. sing yeah. You really just, you know, I think when we come in the lab, bro, we do a good job of just, like, really locking in, making sure, like, we ain't really too on the Instagram, you know what I'm yeah. saying, Facebook, social media. Anybody, and then, like, that, anybody that can't handle alcohol, we just make sure yeah, bottle put up. Bottle like, yeah, put up, Get in here know. and get drunk. <laughs> who's, you, who's the drunk? Who's the fucker? Well, I mean, we don't. No, oh, neither. Oh, no, we don't fuck about, up. We bring in. Oh, okay, okay. you know, we we drink three. He he can drink, boy. You know I sip a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he don't be too faded. Turn around and rip a wire out the wall and that. Oh crazy, man. man, you remember that? <laughs> We done had people. We done, we done seen some crazy shit happen in the studio when people can't really handle their liquor. Spent, or they, this chick spent around, ripped a hard drive, ripped a, a whole whole building. Jew, like <laughs> hard drive came off the desk, slammed down, it was done. Yeah, it was done. Whole session, session was gone. Over. Yeah, Maybe you gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got it. She was fired. That was your job. <laughs> <laughs> that is old. I'm it's sorry. Like, I wonder if she watching this, bro. She might be. She might be. Shout out to you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you got fired, and we all know about it. All right, we got the uh, Beige Tonight record in. Beige Tonight. Introduce it. This is exclusive. This is exclusive. Yeah. Nobody heard this before. Nah, nah, nah. This is exclusive, man. Yeah. Right Nobody now, heard this before. exclusive Beige record off our upcoming project, Dear Summer. The record's called Tonight, produced by Creative Villains and Mark Bird. Let's get it. Let's vibe. <laughs> 